What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 26 of No Labels Necessary. You can check us out every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts and the like. Talking about music, content creators, and the culture of it all. Now, you know we like to start these episodes with some advice, but this advice... I ain't gonna lie to you. It's a little different. I'm coming from a slightly different angle, but it's a conversation worth Uh-oh. having. Uh oh. It's yeah. It, it, it's it's gonna come. <laughs> it, it, it's gonna come. But artists, people don't like working with y'all for a reason. Some of y'all, right? But I think it's fair, and I think it's extremely necessary for you to understand the perspective that this producer puts out there. Check it out. Get caught up in potential. Don't ever get caught up in nigga potential. Uh, that was one, probably one of my biggest problems back in the day. I, like, I had that same shit. You know what I'm saying? Where, where, you, like, where, where you believe in a nigga more than he believes in himself. Oh, God, bro. Don't never get caught up in that. He got to he gotta really, the nigga got to really eat, breathe, and shit this shit. Like, he got to be hit in him. Like, and not, and like, he don't need to be caught up. I had an artist like, I want to be on Worldstar. I want to be a Worldstar. Like, bro, fuck Worldstar. Like, so much other shit we need to be focused on and doing. Like, like lame shit like that. Like, why I don't, why, 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 why I ain't verified yet? Like, nigga, fuck that. We going to get there. Like, Focus on making this this good ass music and building up a following. Then I had another nigga who was so caught up in looking like it, but the nigga music was one was this rudimentary. I, but I believed in my like, bro, you got it if you just lock in. But he didn't know how to build up a fan base. He didn't know how to. But he, but he wanted to go buy fake jewelry at the mall and wear wear wear, wear fake designer and look like it and chase hoes. But he wasn't focused on mastering his craft. Get caught up in. Hey man, like, cost my music rudimentary is yes. a crazy insult, bro. That, that, what did I just say <laughs> last episode? I told you, man. <laughs> I told you, regular words said genuinely hit different than those common curse word insults. And I'll tell you, it hit, I, <laughs> exactly my point. <laughs> but watch, watch episode twenty five to know what we talk about there. But boy, the things that he is, he's saying, great points. This is the stuff that we talk about behind the scenes. Yeah. All right. And many artists don't hear unless you're one of the artists that fit the bill. That we like to talk about it around. That we like enough to talk about the other ones right. around. Yeah. So you can understand because many artists don't understand that. Yo, man, people can't want it more than you. Mm. That's the most common way that you might hear pe- pe- people say. All right. Like, I can't want this more than you. But like, look. We just very recently heard people talk about like having to wake artists up or artists not recording music, right? Pre-established artists and not, and it's like, yo, you, you've been around and you've been popping, you have all this money, but you barely recorded any music and your career isn't solidified. You've popped, but your career isn't solidified yet. And then your project came out and it didn't do all that well, but you also didn't give us that much content to work with. And I'm not talking about content like social media content. I'm talking about, hey, you only recorded, you know, 10 songs in an entire year, mm-hmm. right? That type of thing. So look, people want to believe in artists. People in this music shit, like we talk about it all the time, like people can do other things for more money easy, easier, Yeah. right? If they're in music and they're trying to take it seriously, you know, either they see music as their way out because they got some other things going on in life, keeping them out of the traditional industries, or they in it for the passion. One way or another. Yeah. Either way it go, they really want what they're attached to to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if they start to view you in this light, it's because they want it more than you. Right? And that's a troubling place to be. Now, believing in yourself, though. Like he talked about, hey, one guy wanting – all this validation from platforms like world star and all this type of stuff and look he didn't use the term validation but that's a lot of times what artists are focused on yeah like they have to see themselves somewhere else that has validation for them to feel good about themselves versus having that mentality like no we gonna get there like we good we're gonna go our path stick our ground stand our ground and continue to get better because our shit gonna be so good that people gonna want to come to us people gonna post us for free now we might pay for stuff here and there for sure whatever because we were playing the game at some level but no we're gonna make more people come to us at the end of the day than we're gonna go seek people out yeah 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 and i mean that's that was the most interesting part of me right you talk about the lack of investment 
Well, half of it to me is, you know, artists not wanting to invest in themselves. They they would much rather play the character than do the work to be the character. You know what I'm saying? Which is a, a very real thing. Um, I think we see it more so in like rap, probably than maybe rap and rock, but rap and rock because they have such like dynamic characters that yep. represent those genres that they want to be that character before it like mm -hmm. you are the character that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. The, the thing that I kind of got the most is... I, I don't feel like artists ever think about like how hard it is for people to believe in them. You know what I'm saying? Like, first off, believing in somebody is very emotionally draining, right? Especially when they're not doing all the things that that you want them to do or need them to do. And like, like I, I speak about this kind of thing. Like, I, I've seen both sides of it. Like, one from a marketing perspective, like us in the agency, and then from the management situation that I had, right? And like, it's it's draining when it's like, damn, you've been working 14 hours to get this op for artists that then fucks up and misses it, you know what I'm saying? Like, tiring, bro. Or like, the, the the beautiful thing about the marketing agency is that the payment is the buffer, right? It can be like, hey, you spend this money, so if you don't do the work, there ain't no refunds, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, yeah. you just ass out. But when you in one of those positions where you're not taking money from the artists, like management, um, you know, whatever other creative services that people may be offering, like, that shit is very emotionally draining, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I think that like artists need to take this step back to like one, like every artist listening to this needs to text your team members and be like, bro, I appreciate you and I'm about to get to work. You know what I'm saying? They would probably love to hear that. <laughs> Y'all watching a YouTube video instead of getting to work right now. You know what I'm saying? Just, just being real. You know what I'm saying? They listen to the pod and not working. But also just like think about like think about like what the other side like looks like. You know what I'm saying? Like for you as an artist that's privileged to have people around you that believe in you, more than likely means they're taking work off your hand that you would have to do if they weren't there for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you didn't have this manager, you'd be the one responding to emails at 7 o'clock in the morning. If you didn't have this producer, homie, it'd be you scrolling through YouTube looking for beats, right? If you didn't have this engineer, homie, it'd be you mixing and mastering all that shit. Um, so, like, think about, like, the amount of work that, like, that they are having to go through to believe in. Because, like you said, bro, like, every person in music that has a valuable skill set in theory, it could take that skill set somewhere else. It may not necessarily be a different industry, but it could very much so be a different person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. you know, like it's like, like I said, going back to the marketing thing, I know that if we get 10 clients and one of them is bullshit, I'm just going to focus on the other now. <laughs> like, hey, client number one, bro, you ain't meet the bar, but two, three, four, five, and six, hey, man, they're doing everything we told them to do, right? They're doing everything right. They're making certain moves that you fighting against and won't even attempt to do. Why am I gonna waste my time over here when I could just help make their situation big and we all win? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think like a lot of artists get caught up in thinking like you know, especially if you're like your manager, your team's like flagship artist or like only artist or something. Like you get caught up in like they need me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I run this shit. They came to see me. Oh, this. You know what I'm saying? But any smart business person with any other skill set around music or music artist is. One long term, way more valuable than you are as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Typically, like, like yeah. last last episode, there was a clip we played where the guy was like, um, you know, oh, the the box, the, the, uh, the the boxer video, right? Where he's talking about how like, you know, the the boxer might have X amount of years in this shit, but the manager might have fifty, sixty. Same shit with every other position in music except for the music artist. <laughs> you know, so it's like, like I don't know, but I always come out of that, bro. Somebody, because somebody coming on one of my TikTok videos was like, yo, can you believe in me? And I was like, no. I don't know you enough to want to believe in you. And believing in people is a lot of work. It's a wild question. It is a wild question. I looked at that shit. I was like, believe, will you believe in me? I was going to be nice and say some like encouraging words. And I was like, nah, he need to get hit with reality real quick. I mean, you smack him in the believe face with it. <laughs> believe in yourself. Man. Believe in you, bro. I believe in you enough to respond back to you. <laughs> man. I think artists should seriously think about a manager who's only getting 10% means when you make your first 100K, they only get $10,000. Crazy. All right. Now, that's well, the agreement. The goal is to make you make way more, but still think about those reference points. Yeah. All right. And what you're making at the time and what that means for them. Maybe it's 20%. Okay. They make it $20,000, but there, there's a gap there. And for that person to be heavily invested in you, they really have to make you work for them to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and I don't know, man. I, I was thinking like the belief of the business, people behind the business infrastructure is always going to hit different. I mean, I like, think about a homie the other day who told us like he on a handshake agreement with his artist. Yeah. Crazy, bro. It's like 
got to be because he believed in him because he wouldn't do it if he didn't believe in him, right? Yeah. But I wonder if the artist thinks about it that way. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, how many, you know, conversations have we had with not even just managers, just different people in the industry who's like, yo, I used to work with this uh, this artist. Oh, what happened? Oh, they got up and then ran off. And so I don't think the artist understands, bro, belief from a business perspective, while yes, it is a powerful thing for you as an artist, it motivates you, it maybe gives you insight, right? It helps move you along. For the people behind the artist, belief is a very terrifying, emotionally taxing thing, bro. So like, I understand when certain power players in the industry make you jump through a thousand hoops to finally work with them and talk to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, even like us, bro, like we make motherfuckers go through application. Like, I don't know, man, you gotta, you gotta put a little work in before I even come in and say like, oh, okay, I believe in this enough to do a campaign behind mm-hmm. it, right? So there's still things that we wanna see because w- most people in music have experienced like some type of burn from an artist. Yep. Like the artist getting burned by industry people is a very powerful narrative story as old as time. But the other way around doesn't get talked about as much. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, it's, not it's not as cool, bro. The fans going to usually root for the artist. You know what I'm saying? Right. Whether they're in the wrong or in the right. They're like, I don't know. I don't know that motherfucker. Why I care that, that you finesse them out of five M's? Get your money up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whoever you are. So, yeah, but belief belief in the artist is a, is a scary thing. You know what I'm saying? Then yeah. you get all emotionally invested in shit. And then when they're not doing it right, bro, you just, you angry. You stressed out. Don't know why. Well, you know why, but you just stressed. It's like, nah, it's not, <laughs> not a good feeling. I saw a clip the other day about the Chicago Bulls and it was all these players commenting on Michael Jordan, right? Mm. And yeah, they acknowledged with him that he wasn't the nicest guy all the time, yada, 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 right? But they were like, this dude practiced hard, like crazy. Like one dude said he came from another team and went to the Bulls practice and he was just like, what the hell's going on? Like, (laughs) <laughs> like this is practice like this don't make no sense and then jordan will put up crazy numbers in the in the game and then go to practice and go crazy like like try hard playing all out and what they were saying was in practice you had to come see jordan right mm. like you you really did feel like you were going against jordan and you had to deal with jordan but in the game you were happy that you had jordan on your side mm. right now i'm not telling artists to be hell, you know. <laughs> I don't know what is that art artistzilla, like Bridezilla be yeah, an artistzilla, Arizona, some shit yeah. like that. But what I am saying is all of that they had to deal with with Michael Jordan, when they were in a game with Jordan, they were happy to have him on their team. Yeah. They felt good that there was a better better chance of success. So if you can have people on your team feel like Oh shoot! I'm rocking with this artist. The way he believes, the way he moves, the way he works. I know we're gonna win at some point. Then people will move different. But if they're doubting, they feel like I gotta remind you of stuff. I'm not talking about because you working so hard. I gotta remind you. Oh, you got a meeting right at this time. Like, gotta remind you that practice is a thing. Gotta remind you that hey, you are an artist and you do need to create music, right? You're not listening. You're not coachable because Michael Jordan was still coachable, right? You. If if you don't like possess those things that make people confident to follow you or be a part of your vision, then it's gonna be hard to keep people around of value. Yeah, because you're the spark. You know what I'm saying? It's like the and, spark. and so like we're all looking at you as an artist is like, man, like they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like, why should I feel motivated to do a good job? You know, there there are certain professions where you know, if they have integrity, they would do a good job simply because they were paid for it. Like us, right? Like we, if there's a client that does things that makes us not believe in them, then it's like, well, we're going to at least do a good job at the thing that hires for out of mm-hmm. integrity, right? But you can literally like feel the spark like dying along the way, right? Like you, it, it might start with us. We kind of like, man, I don't know. Then you'll talk to the manager and you see that same look of death in his eyes. Like, man, I'm trying to get him to do X, Y, Z, bro. You ain't going to get no extra. Yeah. Right. But you might not even get the bare minimum. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely like, not gonna extra. Yeah. The the there's people who get extra. Yeah. Just yes. because yeah. of how they carry themselves and the belief that people have in them is like, dang, all right, these are the terms of our agreement. But man, yo, I just talked to somebody and they're dope and they're cool. I'm gonna tell them about you. I don't that's not a part of my job. I'm mm-hmm. gonna tell them about you. Or I'm gonna do a extra 30 minutes on TikTok scrolling, looking for ideas for you. 
because of the way you move or the belief in a project, whatever, whatever. So if you want to get the most out of people, it takes you, it, it requires you to move a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. Period. 100%. You know what I mean? Now, with that being said, got a little something else to talk about. All right. Got a useful tool for artists and artists. I know y'all are always looking for ways to think about what you need as an artist to build out your structure. Well, there was a useful post in Brandman Network that I want to show y'all. Now, again, if y'all don't know about Brandman Network, if you're new to the podcast, first of all, welcome. If you're if you're coming back, welcome back. But Brandman Network is our platform where we take the information we learn in our agency and we have free courses that you can get that game from based on what we learn from the real world. We not know people who are just watching videos and then create and then um, creating strategies based off of other videos about strategy. This is the shit we do in the agency. Brandmannetwork.com. And of course, you get to talk to people on our team and other dope people that we accept. Check it out. It's completely free. Now, the will of support for musicians. Tazzy Online shared this. Appreciate you sharing this. Found this on the IG of Art Rev Soul. We just talked about some Art Rev Soul shit two episodes ago. So shout out to Art Rev Soul. Make sure y'all follow Art Rev, Rev Soul, Soul because they're apparently putting out some good shit. All right? tell, tell them we sent you. We tell sent them you. which. Yeah, we sent you. Put the yeah. at no labels necessary, yeah. you know, in the, yeah. in the uh, tag or something like that. All right. Now, the wheel of artist support. Now, at the middle, what do you, what does that look like? That's just a picture. Are right? those fans? Yeah, I was like, those are supposed to be fans. I oh, thought okay. it was the artist, but yeah, no. So these are just fans. It's a picture more for the second picture. But first in the center, they got fans. All right? And then you got to go out. You know how to use these? No. I all don't, right. I ain't going to so lie to you. It's like some therapy shit, really. <laughs> okay. So fans Im- impact the merch and the touring. So if you look at this space right here with the blue and then the line outside of it. Okay. okay yeah, 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 yeah. All right? And then the casual listener, playlist, SEO, that's how you bring those people in. And of course, the, the, the center matters itself as well. So we can just go towards the center. In the center, you got fans, you got casual listeners, you got the consideration, um, familiar, and just aware, right? So people are just aware when they hear remixes, all right, or they get impacted by some of your branding. This is how I interpret it, right? Yeah, okay. I'll say it's going clockwise. Uh-huh. Okay, I got you. Gotcha. And then if they're familiar with you, right, that might come from content, that might come from press, that might come from advertising, all right? Consideration, all right, that means social media, that means press. So, ah, that's actually an important point. And SEO. So, notice that they have press in two different parts, all right? I think that artists look at press, ads, content, all for one function, but there's different versions of each that are meant for different people in yeah. different parts of the funnel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's kind of what that makes me think about. And then we get into the casual listener, right? Which is um, playlisting. Now, they have an overlap with community management. I think that's just an overlap and it shouldn't be there. But casual listeners might come in from playlisting, right? At most. But then when you get to the fans, that's where you can have that community to manage. You have the touring that you can capitalize on and the merch that you can capitalize on. This is the will of artist support that they, they're presenting. Now, one, based on how we've explained it or just what you see, artists if, or managers, whoever's out there, do y'all have any pushback from what y'all are seeing? Or do y'all love it? I think as a general tool, it's solid. I think it could be a little clearer. Uh, for people who don't know it. Um, so let me see if there is. I'm going to go to the IG page and see if they might have spoke about it in a caption. Give it more detail for somebody. Ja'Cory, did you have anything about this that you wanted to talk about? No, I'm still. I, I want to see the caption first because like I said, it's called the will of support. I'm trying to understand. Is it saying that? The this is the stage where this level of listener show support or or get them you you get their support or is it saying that this is how you get this level of listeners support like through these means? Uh, oh, look at them! They got the the plug. 
to get more info, you got to go to artrevsoul.com. All right, so we weren't able to find any additional um, description from them. So we'll have to take that at face value. But I think it's an interesting exercise to try to even make something like this happen. And it's not a bad tool. I think it is something that at least can get you to visually begin to put things in some boxes. And as much as you can, especially many artists and the way they learn, uh, if you can visually map things out in a way, it's a great way to learn it and always have something to refer back to when you're building out your campaigns. Yeah. So, um, like, I love to do that myself. But we're not going to harp on that one too long. I want to get to the next topic and talk about how major label deals are negotiated, twisted from the perspective of a black billionaire. Now, here is a post from United Masters. All right, they said a look into how major label deals are negotiated when you check it out during a conversation that Robert F. Smith had at his alma mater, businessman Robert Smith detailed how private equity firms function. His outline had similarities to how major label deals are constructed in order to most benefit the label monetarily without actually investing time and energy into a lot of the artists they sign. Hmm. Check this out. Let me tell you what private equity is. Okay, it is typically eight white males sitting around a table arguing about which of their deals is better than the others. <laughs> they have 15 or 18 deals in their mind and 25 relationships. They think that if they bring them together, they can make money. And then they sit at the table and argue about, well, my deal's better than yours and I'm gonna shoot your idea. It's a very bespoke process. And most people think, oh, by that, the cream will rise to the top. The best returns will, 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 will be, uh, will manifest out of that process. But go look at the facts. The facts show high volatility. OK, some cases do great. Some cases lose everything. Right. And, you know, look, I don't call that investing. That's placing bets. All right. Now, there's another great video on this same carousel from somebody else. But that alone, like, when we look at it, if you've paid attention to label infrastructure traditionally enough, you know that artists are looking for one big win. Now, labels are looking for one big win to take care of all their losses, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, y'all 500 artists might fail, but man, this one hit, and man, they covered everything and more. That's where we're getting our profit from. Why are labels so tight with that money, right? That's a part of why, because we don't know how we're going to make this work, right? Mm -hmm. So, and we know that we don't know how to systematically make something pop. So, we have to do our best guess, provide our system of resources to increase the odds, but then at the end of the day, we just gotta see what happens. Gambling. 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 It's gambling. It's it's a it's a str more strategic gamble, but not so strategic. I don't even, I don't even want to call it in most cases, nah, I don't even want to call it I what's a better word? It is a it's a system built to to gamble and lessen the odds of major losses. All right. So I've talked to people, actually, Wendy Day, shout out to her. She was one of the people that first kind of told me that, look, they have numbers when it comes to these deals that artists make. All right. So the accounting department has it cleared i can do this number i can do this number because i have to make a certain amount of money on an investment they are looking at the odds of this they're working all the numbers so when you're thinking that you're in this process of a bidding war you will have people drop out yeah why because they have numbers that are work based on their system and their infrastructure that they can make an investment in so a lot of times i think from an ego standpoint, we think we're bidding and getting a maximum value. But really, what we're getting is getting the maximum value that they can give us, not what we're worth. And in some cases, probably many cases, your worth is up beyond their maximum. But you're happy that you negotiated to a higher point, even though that higher point is not 
your true worth is just the maximum worth that they can view you as and provide for you which kind of sucks yeah you know what i mean but you're like oh yeah I, I i made these folks fight and then they offered me this number and i went with them you know so all of this is an illusion in some ways right and being aware of that we kind of have to work to na to navigate that and just understand the game for what it is and how we want to flip it for ourselves and know that this might be the most value I might get this time, but then you have to have a long-term vision, which is another discussion. But staying with his example of private equity, you know, on one end, look, you understand the idea of a company trying to leverage yeah. his resources to minimize the work. That's what everybody's trying to do, yeah. right? So can't feel bad about it like or be mad at somebody for doing the shit that's what everybody's trying to do in their life in one way or another right but of course you have to be aware that when you're doing that with somebody that might work against you so my i get it i get how if i'm the artist and i hear this okay that might be a little bit upsetting now how do you navigate this other than negotiating trying to get your maximum value there are some labels that might be more akin to understanding who you are, believing in your vision. Like mm -hmm. You have to start to look for some of those other things, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, look, business is business. Uh, you know, I, I hate that term maybe in general and just applying to everything. But, like, in general, business is this, trying to leverage your resources to get a maximum out of output. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, we can't be mad at that and act like that shit is evil, right? But... He said bespoke. It's a bespoke process. And I'm not going to lie. I couldn't remember what that shit meant. So I looked it up. <laughs> so bespoke means made for a particular customer. Okay. All right. So what he's saying is that process might work for some, but it don't work for others either. Yeah. It don't work for most. That's what he's really saying. So you have to figure out if the label or people that you're going in business with for whatever type of deal doesn't make sense for your system. Because what we experience all the time is people saying, I mean, yeah, man, that other artist, I hear them complaining, but they ain't never said nothing crazy to me mm -hmm. or all my money coming. Like, I'm good. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is the reality of it as well. Business models fit some people just like different artists fit some consumers. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't remember who we was talking to recently that broke it down like sports terminology. Right. It was like some players do better in the, in the different team system than, than another team right the play style ends up kind of changing yep. or the, the play style fits them as a player a lot better for whatever yep. reason but i think like artists looking at it like the labels are gambling i think that should make a lot of things that they typically despise about labels make a lot of sense right yes 100%. so you know big one is man why are labels no longer doing artist development that shit expensive. And expensive. Then I've been developing you for four or five years just for you to quit. You know, worst case scenario, something bad happens to you. Or we just learned the shit doesn't hit anymore because the whole music landscape changed. Right. Nope, and, not doing and it's that. It's harder to make money. Mm -hmm. So I don't have that expense. To oh, yeah, to give up. Yeah. 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 It's like I'm investing however many tens of care a year and you're and you, and you not making no money back until year four or five. Mm. I'd rather catch you at year four or five you know what i'm saying like to be real right so 100%. they get the, the the gripe for like you know signing viral acts but it's like the viral act while yes there's still a risk they have a bit more proof of concept than you that doesn't so in their minds it's a safer bet right hey he already got a million followers you know what i'm saying he already got a song with 10 million streams on it he already got a content mm -hmm. infrastructure and a team you know what i'm saying like all right this this feels right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we can, mm -hmm. we can kind of move ahead and do our thing. So, yeah, that, that's it, it's, it's just interesting because one of those things where, like, if you pay enough attention to how labels move, you you could kind of, like, guess it. You know what I'm saying? You could, you could see it. But it is nice having somebody that is understanding that say that. But then the other thing, too, that I think he what he mentioned on is, like, the – what am I trying to say? I guess the, like – the, the human aspect of it, right? At the end of the day, these labels, these companies, these whatever people you look up to, they're just headed by a person. And sometimes people make bets not off of like what they think is the best thing or what, you know what I'm saying, they think has the potential to do really well. Sometimes they invest in things because their friend told them about it and they really want to help their friend. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Right? How many times have you ever seen an artist that you'd be like, man, why is this motherfucker getting so much attention? Man, I, I personally feel like he's trash. And then you learn that him and the head of somebody are like childhood best friends, or like grew up or something, right? They right. got like a, a pact or a bond that's deeper than just the, the business relationship, right? Yep. And so I, I think a lot of people tend to just look at these systems as just businesses, bro. Like, and, and so you kind of think like, oh, a business is going to do, should be doing like what is best for the business or best for the bottom line. But there's a human at the top of this, bro. And sometimes humans do things that are irrational come when you compare it to the system they typically hold themselves against. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And rational you, within that system might be rational within their life as a whole. Exactly. Exactly right. right. Yo, I, I'm a label and we typically like to sign, you know, rappers that come from the streets, but I'm about to take a risk and sign this rapper from the suburbs. It's like, oh my God, that's so groundbreaking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's so, so life changing. But like, that happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes those decisions get made because of the perspective of the person at the top. You know what I'm saying? And then it trickles down to the rest of the organization. See, this is what I love about this conversation because when you pay attention, you study business and you study people, none of this shit is surprising. Mm -hmm. And you would be messed up to try to assume otherwise. Yeah, you look weird for trying to go against it. You, you look weird <laughs> for trying to go against it because you are the person that you're fighting in many ways, mm -hmm. right? Human, right? People say stuff about like helping out friends right or giving some advantages to their kids mm -hmm. wouldn't you do that shit yeah or it's like yeah, you think you're the only one thinking that yeah why in the fuck would i make all this money <laughs> to not lessen some of the struggles of my family we're not talking about like spoiling or putting on and giving around giving shit that maybe they straight up don't deserve and like you have zero talent and then I'm, I'm like, I'm, I wouldn't lie to my kid and be like, dang, bro, you can sing and you can't sing. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you don't have good music, you don't have good music. But at least maybe if he wanted to be in that category, I don't want my kids to do to, to be artists in that way. But <laughs> hey, like, all right, you might get a studio to record in yeah. that nobody else could typically afford or they would have to work to have that themselves. Yeah. Right. Advantages come like that's what we all do. We all want to create advantages for people that we care about in ourselves in some form of fashion, yeah. right? Now we're not talking about being unethical or any of that extreme stuff, but like it's just basic human nature and people tend to help the people they know more. I'm not mm -hmm. even talking about best of friend, but like if I don't know who you are, right? This person found out some way to meet me, right? And now we're like in the same circle or we just happen to haphazardly be in the same circle and then we spark it off cool right and friends happen to meet friends of their friends like yep. that's how how all this stuff works it's, so that's why people try to work to get in circles right that's why um it doesn't make sense to fight or spend too much time thinking and, and creating this myth of making it bigger than it is like there's this rage against you or or you know there's this uh underlying evil element to everything you know what i mean you know how y'all get with music now let's get back to the business it's the same shit mm -hmm. right we look so much about we look at so many things as artists are raging against the machine um and overcoming labels and and labels are now giving these better deals because they demand it it's all just basic business you yeah. alluded to it well look I'm not making the same amount of money from music, so I'm also not going to give you a deal for as much, right? And, or I'm not going to invest in you until you get to a later point down the road. Yep. Back in the day, right, there were labels that had like l legitimate artist development, labels, you know, that had like Motown, they had like, um, like coaches for edit kit coaches, mm -hmm. right? They'll put you with some, some songwriters. They had this entire assembly line, literally, of people to run you through. But that means I had to pay all of these different coaches to coach you, yep. right? And the rest of my artists and have them on my payroll to build this system out. Now I can't afford to do all that because the risk is higher and I have to cut expenses, right? Because it's hard to make money in music. But what I can do is give you a better deal but i'm also going to take less risk yeah right so why aren't the labels doing x y and z well i didn't invest <laughs> in doing x y and z yeah you are basing what i should be doing 
on a perception from yesteryear. The old business model. <laughs> the old business model. <laughs> we ain't in that today. Yeah. That's why I ain't doing shit for you. Because it don't make sense based on how I run shit before. At one time, to be real, labels did do shit. Yeah, a lot of shit. A lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. So, like, when you just pay attention to the business model, it's not like, we're not here to argue on the behalf of labels. It's arguing on the behalf of basic logic because when you face it that way, it's going to make all of your deals better. Yeah. It's going to help you be less surprised. So it's going to create your planning a, l- a lot better, right? It's going to put create. It's going to inspire you to plan better and help you make strategic decisions better because your expectations won't be put in the wrong places. Yeah, exactly. Like, it literally doesn't make sense for this person to do this if you understand what that person does. It literally does make sense for that person to do that because it's like, hey, based on your percentage and how things are buzzed down and the way your business model works, you should be going hard for me right now. And if you're not going hard for me, we we not going to be set up right all of those things become a lot easier to see when you literally pay attention to the business model at hand and every label don't have the same business model right there's some generalities but in periods of time people will be invested in one category more than another because they're trying to find their space in the market and they'll build infrastructure so you look at some labels like atlantic for a period of time was going hard on influencer types right yep yep they were probably building more infrastructure and learning around that specifically, right? So all of this is something to pay attention to, not just a general label idea of what were labels yesterday, what are labels today in, in, in terms of general business, but what does this specific label seem to be invested in and how do they go about it, all right? What does this distribution company seem to be invested in? How do they go about it? Why are they able to only take 15% or why do they let me put their shit on the platform for free? Oh, because they're charging me $20 a month or whatever, right? Cool. But what does that mean, too? Oh, yeah, there's probably less investment in if my music goes anywhere because they're not getting the percentage. Mm-hmm. They're cool as long as I'm putting my, my shit on their platform, right? All of that <laughs> makes a difference. And once you understand what those differences come with, then you can make an educated decision and build your systems around your choices as well yeah. have your own business model yeah exactly or at least look for the business model that makes sense for you this is what it all boils down to man because you'll see artists argue against the system it's like bro the system just is not for you go somewhere else <laughs> that's it that's it get out get out of my yard complaining i'm gonna throw a rock out the window go down the street because <laughs> the way this party running it, it, everybody else happy in this bitch yeah. <laughs> talk about change the music <laughs> <laughs> go down the street right that's all it is don't be that one person right um but but no like seriously it, you save yourself a lot of struggle and it's going to help you move a lot a lot um smarter because what i hate is the polarization of everything not just in music but shoot media in general today and when people are going so hard around these topics and making them so emotional they're actually causing people not to think mm-hmm. like emotion is like the number one way to distract people from basic logic so like always demonizing labels and these infrastructures these pages that have all these pay uh these like thumbnails and shit and videos about labels being evil and they're doing this that and the third i guarantee <laughs> Look, all they're doing is monetizing your attention. You're like, oh, those people are screwing me over and they're the person who's educating me on all these people who are scamming me. No, they're playing in (laughs) to the people's predisposition to react to negativity and they're screwing you over in a way by taking your mind down a rabbit hole where you can no longer be truly productive in the marketplace. Yeah, but they they set the flash bomb off over there so they could rob the bank over here. That's exactly what's (laughs) going down. Like, that's exactly what's going down. So, like, stop watching all that shit too and taking that in. Like, all right, let me stop hearing how shit evil so now I'm going to be so scared that I can't make a move. Let's just find out how the thing actually works because fear comes from the unknown. When you know that hey this man wasn't floating because it was some special effects going on oh it's not as wild like it's not it's it's not that cool anymore right it's like learning the tricks to the magic yeah right yeah 
when you understand how things are done, it just becomes a matter of fact thing. So work on that, not this propaganda of fear and demonization that people push all the time. Now, with that being said, let's keep it pushing because we now have to talk about <laughs> <laughs> something far more important than labels and contracts. We got a contract that's going to change the game. Corey, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do know what you're talking about. And I've been waiting for this one. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. Bam Man Kivo put his baby mama dime on a contract just in case she blows up after they break up and profits off his name. He said, I'll receive 50% of what she makes. Five. 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 I feel it. Five. If I make you a star, or not even a star, let's not even take it there. You know what I'm saying? Because Bam Man Kevo has his his prolificness, but I don't think he just like Drake and motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if I make you, if I, if me and my face card attached to your face card is the reason why you get a business entity out your face card, yes, I want a piece of that. Maybe not, maybe not necessarily 50%. 50% depends on the situation. But I'm in there forever in some type of way. I need that in writing. I call bullshit, bro. What? I think it's a marketing stunt for one. No, I mean, probably, yeah. But I think it's an interesting conversation. The conversation and the <laughs> concept, though, is actually very real today in many ways. Yes. Very real, which is what we're going to talk about. Because <laughs> 50%, that's a crazy number. Managers aren't even getting 50%. I mean, if I'm the catalyst, man. Workers. Yeah. You ain't a catalyst. <laughs> what you mean? Bruh. If you if you if you popped out with your wife popped after no I'm saying like, let's they say break up. let's say you 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 posted your your wife uh-huh. and and thousands of our subscribers rushed to her page uh-huh. and she's like damn this shit lit right now I'm about to drop a course uh huh and then she drop a course uh huh and that shit do an M mm. you tell me you don't want 500k of that I mean of course I, I want 500k off of that you wouldn't feel like you deserve no crazy because they still got to sell the course that's fair you, you're right that's true All right that's true they got to see the opportunity <laughs> cap off of the opportunity you know what i mean but shit if i was a pimp you know what i mean that's new pimping no 100 you know what i mean now i'm just dating girls so i can get a percentage <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> i'm not even dating for love we only together <laughs> we're yeah, I'm, gonna get you lit. I'm gonna get you hey, lit. one I'm of y'all gonna, gonna get lit and i'm not my, even doing the work it's just passive y'all out there in the marketplace <laughs> trying to figure your life up and shit what the hell is blows up look i don't even care about blow up that's like stupid to 15 me. month fashion over contract nah fuck that shit that's stupid bro <laughs> i don't want you to blow up if i'm going this route i want whatever you get <laughs> nigga you can go be a nurse at emory and give me 50 percent of that no nah, see that's what i want 50 percent. that's what kind of gets wild if nah, i'm man. going this route <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going bad, I'm going all the way. If it's anything, I feel like entertainment or business focus. I feel like it's understood. She gonna get a job as a nurse, bro. Like that, they ain't had nothing to do with your your clout. What you mean? Unless you the, mean? the place is like, oh shit, you been man, Kevin girl. Yo, we got a position that opened right up for you. All them views on Instagram, especially well, these nurses be having some pages. I wouldn't know. You don't, don't want to know? I don't, yeah. No, I wouldn't know. know. Oh, you wouldn't know? Yeah, I don't follow any nurses. Not that I know of. Oh, you know. Yeah, you shouldn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I I click the little three dots in the right corner and say, not interested. Don't show me no more of this. You yeah. know what I mean? I got to stay focused when I'm on the ground. You know what I mean? You're fucking up my focus in my life. You know, I got a, a life to uphold. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but the concept is crazy because the way I see people move in reality matches this. And I would not be surprised if this ever happened at some point, whether it upheld contractually, I don't know. Someone would probably like settle and get a percentage or whatever. But these kids is dating each other based on their followers. 100%. Popularity used to be an understood concept socially and popularity was something that did drive somebody to be more attractive. Right. And it was it was less tangible. But now, yeah. bro, we got literal numbers yeah. right here. Like I've seen a how many followers you got before she decides to move forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've seen it. I know that's not a representation of all women out there. Let me under, let me make, it, make it clear. But I've seen it with my own eyes in real life, not even on the gram or like YouTube. No, I've experienced this. And I'll say, oh, everything changes. 
You know what I mean? So people are literally dating for this, getting their followers up and then flipping. And then sometimes they're doing like PR shit, just like legitimate celebrities would be doing back in the day yeah. where they're dating and then they're making their breakup a thing for the benefit of both of them. Yeah. Hey, if we're going to do this shit, we might as well. I'm going to make a little yeah. video about it. You know, Get a little something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which like, you got to respect, but it's it's almost like three steps away from the augmented reality world where we got glasses and I could just walk around and see how many followers everybody <laughs> got <laughs> <laughs> and make my decisions like that in the room. That's damn near where it is, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's really interesting that people are moving like, like the concept because people are truly moving on this behavior and we know that people have flipped relationships again and again and again. You can look at the Amber Rose, you can look at mm -hmm. Kim flipping her Paris Hilton relationship, right? Oh yeah. Like, Flip, 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 and the whole celebrity culture has been built that way anyway. Though that was literally how PR shit was ran. A lot of these movies, they will let you think that they're dating because it brings attention to the mm -hmm. movie. It makes it more believable. All these different types of things. This has been a thing. The getting percentage, man. That's what I'm saying, bro. That shit that's is, the extra. That shit is far, bro. <laughs> like the business models it creates. Like when I saw this, I was like, "Man, this makes so much sense." Because to, to your point, if 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 the other person is already up, then yeah, no, you can't touch that, right? So I think of like a um, what's her name, like little baby and like his baby mom situation. Like she was up before she was dating little baby. I think I'm not sure. I could be wrong on that. No, she was. It, wait, what'd you say? She was up before she met little baby, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah she was. Yeah, sometimes. So, so yeah, that yeah, I would get, but he'd be wild to ask her for fifty percent, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you <laughs> if I'm if I was little baby and I started dating, you know what I'm saying, this girl, she works at Starbucks, she got six hundred followers on Instagram. And then I post you in within a matter of months, you got one point two million, you get invited to fashion shows, you got fashion over deals, all kinds of crazy brand flips. I want my at least thirty to fifty percent. That's all I ask. I feel like that's fair. I mean, did you, it's like I invested in you. You got to improve her life, man. We, that would be improving her life. What do you mean, bro? I don't know, man. Starbucks is pretty competitive, bro. Nah. They, they pay for college. <laughs> no, nah, it's McDonald's. <laughs> no, Starbucks pay for college, bro. McDonald's, they Be probably do too. Yeah, McDonald's pay for college. I wouldn't be surprised. But I wouldn't <laughs> believe the McDonald's shit, man. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there'll be some untruth there. You got to <laughs> jump over some hoops. That's well, Starbucks is nicer to their employees. But... <laughs> <laughs> but which who did we just talk about oh no I, I think that was last night when i was talking to uh tuco he was like hey they, they mcdonald's did go ahead and up that minimum wage and then next thing you know what they do they drop their first 100 percent automated restaurant oh uh, yeah <laughs> on the other <laughs> and they raise the prices bro you know mcdonald's ain't got a dollar menu no more hey bro that shit crazy man, they ain't had a dollar menu for a minute man the value menu i was like what <laughs> exactly value man, to who I used to live off that dollar <laughs> me you like oh, hey man everybody can think today is better they, they want to for their own nostalgia but I don't know man y'all ain't had no legit dollar me that's what I'm saying bro busting. bro I went and got two McDoubles that shit came out like 369 I was like 369 bro I thought it was gonna be like I had like $2.15 and change on me I'm like <sighs> I'm like never mind I don't want it take it back <sighs> I'm going home and cooking something healthy <laughs> <laughs> I can't lose my money and my life. Exactly, bro. Too much. <laughs> too much. Too many risks, bro. The risk was worth it because it was cheap. Yeah. Once it ain't cheap, then it's like, nah, I should do better. See, I should go home and cook something else. Humanity and basic <laughs> business, right? You weigh the cost. That's all it is. We are all doing it at all times. So don't be surprised when somebody else do it. It would be inhumane for you to presume me not to be human. <laughs> all right, but. Yeah, man, I think no, nah, I think this is crazy. It's a really interesting concept. Um, and it would be funny if they act I don't know what funny, but like, it'll be very interesting if they act, if he actually did this shit. I how they do it, bro. It's probably just capping on here. If, if Lori Harvey can make niggas sign NDAs, Bandman Kevo can make his baby mom sign. Mm -hmm. Whatever type of deal is with Where's I'm trying to draw the line. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of people with N NDAs is shit. If I was Lori Harvey, I'd do it. celebrity culture. Nah, bro. If I was Lori Harvey, I'd do it, bro. I'd start dating random niggas and popping them off. If I was any celebrity, really, I'd do it, bro. Because like I said, bro, this is a crazy business model, bro. See, but you then have to become good at talent management. No, nah, you get somebody, you hire somebody for that. You get an agent or something. Somebody, somebody go in business with you. Not hey. talent management, my bad. Like brand partnership no, person? No, and ring Oh, uh, yeah, Recognizing sure. talent. I mean, it's regular dating, bro. Regular dating is a and bro. 
It is. <laughs> it is. But you got an A and R for that extra variable. Yeah, that's true. You know that's what true. I mean? That's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, hey, talk about fuckboys. <laughs> hey, but maybe the fuckboy, you know, is good for for the, the pocket. So, you know. I'm gonna still keep my some some, <laughs> some of my boxes for this podcast. You know, I'm not gonna go all the way, Sean. But <laughs> um, I I I get with this halfway, halfway. Yeah, look, man, let's just uh, drop in the comments what y'all would do, man. If you was a lit artist, girl or guy, both sides. Because sure. like I said, because I, sure. I have my thoughts there. I honestly think a girl artist would get a nigga way more lit than a nigga would get a girl artist. Mm. I, I think so. Mm. Cause way more people pay attention to the girl artists than the guy artists. It depends on how and why. But yo, yeah, yeah, go ahead. But yeah, I just want to know what y'all think, man. Drop it in the comments. Would y'all would y'all take fifty percent, or would you let them live their their new best life with no contractual obligation to you? Mm. That's what I want to know. Mm. <laughs> It'd be interesting to do it with options, All right? So there's an option like. Kind of like marriage, like how things change somewhat if you like cheat and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, all right, maybe for the good ones, you don't activate the contract in full. You know what I mean? So there's incentives for good behavior. The only reason I wouldn't activate the contract is if we got married. Because then at that point, the money just come back in the house. Well, that's different. Yeah. That's different. But I'm like, it's like a peace of mind clause. If you let me maintain my peace of mind, which is extremely valuable, then I'm not gonna hit you over the head. Or if I hit you over the head, you ain't gonna be knocked out. You know what I mean? I ain't taking that less than twenty five percent. Man, less than twenty five percent? Okay. Twenty five percent, but then fifty percent for the people who do you wrong. That's all I'm saying. It's just a, yeah. a, a <laughs> an incentive to have good behavior in the relationship. I don't, you know. But see, but then and this is going to the hypothetical business model. Like at some point, I feel like I wouldn't want that because I want to go pop off more celebrity people out there. You know what I'm saying? So then you would be looking for somebody. Pimping basically, like you, you already said it, bro. Pimping basically, that's basically exactly what it is. But that's what I would go, bro. Like, I mean, I got one of you. You hit this vertical. You know what I'm saying? You, you, whatever. I can appeal to these people over here. Now let me go find somebody that, like, you know, all right, man. Let's say girl one appeals to the fashion over demographic. I want to go find the girl that appeals to the Barnes and Noble demographic, the anime demographic, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The athletic demographic. I'm trying to have a whole management team of these type of clients. That's what I'm saying. I mean, at that point, you can just stop dating them and skip to the signing. Why not skip to the signing? Now, I feel like by like person two or three, I would start telling girls that like, yo, like, I'm going to be real with you. This is purely a business venture for me. Now, we can do this and make it look real on the outside you know what i'm saying but i want you to let you know where i'm at with things like once i get your career moving you making about six figures a month i'm gonna move on to, to the next one so i can get some more of these I, i'll be real about it mm. oh no that's plenty of people some girls will do it no there's a lot of that would actually yeah. do that shit. yeah that's what i'm saying but i'm just saying <laughs> you know what at some point i value my time in a way where it's just like no nah, we're not even gonna pretend to date just give me 50 percent and now I'm gonna build other systems. Maybe I hire a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dang, I can't remember. Oh, a stable of dudes, and pop these dudes off. And now <laughs> you have to stick to my model and date this dude. <laughs> so, so I don't even have to be attached to any of it. Now you own the whole thing. But anyway, we're not gonna even get that much deeper down that rabbit hole. Hey, well, every once in a while, I don't know. We might end it. And then the 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 pie with some bullshit, you know what I mean? I, mean, I think that's a good category. <laughs> <Yeah>. Some bullshit <laughs> and, <laughs> and ruminate on it a little bit. This is episode number twenty six. I'm Brad Shot. I'm Corey, and we out. Peace.